The slow movement is a reaction against our fast-forward culture. Nowadays, many of us are stuck in roadrunner mode, where every moment of the day feels like a race against the clock. And this constant dashing around, this kind of stress-fueled existence that a lot of us are stuck in, is taking a terrible toll on every aspect of our lives, from our diet and health, to our relationships, to also to the quality of our work, and even the economy in general. And so the slow movement is a, is a pushback against that. The, the slow philosophy, slow with a capital S, is not about doing everything as slowly as possible, it's about doing everything as well as possible. So slow, in essence, is about doing things at the right speed. There are times to be fast, there are also times to be slow. And if you get that balance right, you eat better, you play better, you, you work better, you live better. Well, the slow movement has exploded in recent years and is uh, ironically growing very fast. You find it, the, the idea of doing things at the right speed being pushed into every corner of our lives, even in the, in the high-tech sector you find, you know, the, the kind of geek demographic, people who are addicted to technology, discovering that they can get more out of their gadgets if they, if they take a slower approach, if they switch them off from time to time. So for instance, when David Cameron took over as, as Prime Minister, his first uh, act was to say to all of his cabinet ministers, when we gather around the table for a meeting, we're all going to switch off our phones. We're going to put some, you know, speed limits on the information superhighway and what have they discovered? Well, they discovered that people were able to focus, pay attention, and the meetings were much more productive and, and fertile as a result. So again, it's an example of, just one example, of how slower is very, very often better. Well, the, the slow revolution is not a, a Luddite anti-technology thing at all. I mean, I love technology and I have all of the gadgets and they're wonderful. They're incredible tools for allowing us to be more productive. You know, you're, you're, you can be connected to the office, you can go home, you can be away, you can work anytime. The problem arises when working anytime turns into working all the time. And really the, the slow message when you're thinking about technology is about, again, it's this word I keep coming back to, is balance. It's about knowing when to switch on and when to switch off. And if you are able to change gears with your technology, if you're able to use that little red button that says off judiciously and in a disciplined manner at the right moments with your gadgets, then technology can be a hugely liberating uh, a piece of equipment. It's about using it in the right way so that you don't become a slave to the gadgets. The gadgets, on the contrary, become a useful tool. I think that one reason that people become stressed in the workplace is that they lose control over their own time. They feel that someone else is controlling when they do things and at what speed they do them at. And companies that benefit from the slow philosophy, one of the first things they do is they give back power over your time to their employees. So they maybe allow employees to work at times that suit them. They allow them, give them the freedom to switch off their phones or not have to check their emails or their um, instant messages at times that suit them. So it's about giving people autonomy over their own time to allow people to work at their own pace. Well, one very vivid example of putting this slow idea of giving people control over their time in, into practice in the workplace is, is Google, which operates what it calls the 20% rule. And that means that it's, a, it's engineered, it's really creative workers are allowed to devote one-fifth of their time to their own projects. So that means during that 20% of their working week, there are no timetables, no targets, nobody hovering over them and telling them they've got to do this, that, or the other by a certain time. And on the surface, that sounds like a, you know, a kind of surfer's charter or a, you know, a, 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 a license to be a slacker. But the opposite, of course, turns out to be true. But because you allow the, the Google staff to unleash their creative energy and to control their own pace and their own approach to time, they're much more productive. So many of Google's most famous and successful you know, game-changing products like Gmail, for instance, or AdSense, came out of that 20% time. And, and a lot of people at Google refer, refer to that as their slow time. 